Hey everyone, welcome to the Autoimmune Dietitian YouTube channel. My name is Annie. I am a registered dietitian and I work mainly with clients struggling from underlying issues from uh, autoimmune and inflammatory disorders. So in my work with my clients, I help them implement a personalized nutrition roadmap designed to improve mobility, concentration, energy levels to help them hopefully live, help them live the lives that they should be living. I apologize in advance. I have a cold. I sound terrible. Um, but I wanted to make this video today to really kind of unpack what balanced eating is. Um, so if you are struggling to keep, you know, that New Year's resolution for eating better in 2023, or, you know, maybe you decided just to clean up your diet and, and focus on, you know, eating like really good nutritious food, um, a lot of people over overcomplicate balanced eating. And they think that they need to make these elaborate meals and recipes that require a bunch of ingredients um, in order to eat better. However, creating balanced meals is quite simple when you break it down to the nuts and bolts of what a meal should look like. So today I'm giving you my secret to balanced eating and the tricks to keep you consistently eating high quality, minimally processed meals. So before I jump in, I need to attach my usual disclaimer that the information in today's talk is not the substitute for the diagnosis, treatment, or care of disease by a medical provider. This is for informational purposes only. So please consult your qualified health professional for any changes that you make to your medical care. Okay, so let's kick this conversation off with talking about balanced eating. What actually is balanced eating? Um, balanced eating is a term that describes an eating pattern that includes all macronutrients, so proteins, carbs, fats, with plenty of variety and colors. It also implies that we're eating foods in the right proportions to what our body needs to maintain optimal health. Um, the caveat here is that everyone's different. So the needs of one person may be totally different than the needs of another person. And determining what your body needs depends on your health status, how active you are, what your health goals are, how your body metabolizes carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, and so forth. So now you're probably wondering, how do you figure this out? This seems very complicated. Um, and to be completely honest, there is no one equation to calculate your needs exactly. Even energy calculations or you know those calorie calculations that you find online aren't totally accurate. So this means that eating is a trial and error process and you really need to listen to your body. Um, I know that's not what people want to hear because people mostly like to have a very, you know, succinct and, you know, by uh, planned out way to eat. But um, let me just tell you, it changes every day. So how do you structure meals? For healthy people and for most of the general population who may even have chronic disease, using a variation of the MyPlate method it's a great way to get started on a balanced eating journey. So if you're not familiar with my plate, um, it's a way to visualize your plate into food groups to eat balanced meal. So half of your plate should be non-starchy vegetables, a quarter of your plate should be protein, and a quarter should be starchy vegetables um, or whole grains. Um, so taking this visual and applying it to an actual meal structure, um, here's my secret on how to do this. When you're thinking of meal planning, you wanna start with your non-starchy vegetables, which is usually the ones that you don't start with, but I want you to start with those. You know, which ones do you want at your meal? Are you having a salad? Or do you feel like roasting some vegetables with the side of protein? So once you choose your vegetables, and I would pick a minimum of two, um, you can start planning on how you wanna prepare them. And once you know how you wanna prepare them, then figure out what protein would work best for that. You can also choose your protein based on what you plan to cook or how you plan to cook your vegetables to make it even easier. So let's say you wanted roasted broccoli and cauliflower. You could choose a piece of salmon and roast them all together um, on one you know, sheet pan for a super easy meal. Or you can get a mix of vegetables, roast them, and then use them throughout the week with different proteins. So for starchy vegetables or grains, those are always the last thing I think about. Um, you could roast some potatoes with your vegetables or make a big pot of rice to have throughout the week or other grains or pseudo grains like quinoa. Um, so given the state of the economy, we're all cutting back on expenses, um, but I will make the argument that eating high quality food should be a top priority. Um, in the U.S., we spend less food uh, than any other nation in proportion to our income. Um, that's also probably linked to, you know, the reason why we have rising rates of chronic diseases. So eating quality food matters. 
the more you can prioritize that in your budget, the better you and your family will feel. So that being said, I know that's not a reality for many people. So here are some ways to get good quality food on a budget. Buying whole foods is actually cheaper than buying processed food in some cases. Think about it. A large bag of oatmeal is a lot cheaper than buying cereal. A block of cheese is less expensive than shredded packaged cheese. So yes, it may take more time and effort and require some cooking, but you will save money overall and you will be healthier. Shop seasonally. Fruits and vegetables that are in season are likely local and less expensive than buying products that have been shipped in from across the globe. Also, tap into your local farmer's market or CSA box. You can get great produce from local farmers at a fraction of supermarket prices. Buy frozen fruits and vegetables. They are just as nutri nutritious as fresh, and you can cut down on food waste because you can freeze what you don't use. Buy cheaper cuts of meat. Here's the secret. Oregon meats are less expensive and more nutritious than the standard cuts of meat. So if you can't get over the taste of organ meat, then rotate in plant-based proteins if you can tolerate them. Buying dry or canned whole beans is also very inexpensive and are a great source of protein and fiber. And then cook at home. Eating out is incredibly expensive. I'm always shocked when I, you know, order for my family of four and it's like over a hundred dollars. It's crazy. So buying, you know, processed foods can also be very expensive. Um, use coupons. Um, that's a very simple way to save money on your grocery store items. And then meal plan. We're going to talk about this in another video, so stay tuned for that. And meal planning is key for reducing food waste and keeping your grocery bill in check. Okay, my last point to hammer home here with eating balanced meals is to listen to your body. Nutrition is a very personalized thing. Even an expert like me can't tell you exactly how much of something you should be eating because we all metabolize food differently and that changes every day. So it's important to listen to your body. Your body knows what it needs and it tells you when it's full. We just don't listen enough. Also, trial and error will help you figure out what allocation is best for you. But if you need more help figuring this out, please seek out a qualified nutrition expert to guide you through this process. All right, just to recap today, we focused on balanced eating and my secrets to doing this. Remember, choose your non-starchy vegetables first. Um, thank you for watching my video. If you liked what you saw, please hit the subscribe button. These come out around every week. And I'm always talking about something related to autoimmune disease, nutrition, lifestyle, and how to blend those together. So thank you so much, and I will see you next time.